Hello and welcome to Amazon Sambhav in association with India Today Television. Small businesses and entrepreneurs have long been the engines of growth for the Indian economy, not just in catering to customers in India, but contributing to exports as well. In the financial year of 2022, they contributed more than 45% to India's total exports, and hence it's a key priority of the government as well. And in the last few years, e-commerce is emerging as a big channel direct to customer or D2C exports. A lot of Indian entrepreneurs, marquee brands as well as startups are adopting e-commerce to go completely global. One such global seller is Soulflower, a beauty and personal care brand that's making waves worldwide with its range of natural products. Today, some of its products are category leaders on Amazon's global marketplaces, leading to stratospheric revenue growth in the last two to three years. And here's a look at their story. I'm Natasha Tuli. I'm the co-founder of Soul Flower. We provide natural preservative free solutions for all sorts of skin and hair concerns. We were founded in 2001 and have been selling in India, in US, in Dubai and in Singapore via the Amazon marketplace since 2014. Soul Flower has its own farm in Rajasthan where we have uh, women who work for us and make our products with their own hands using natural ingredients that are grown on the farm. I chanced upon a book which was the autobiography of Jeff Bezos that is a founder of Amazon and when I read about how he had built Amazon and the whole idea of the customer centricness behind it that was the time I decided I have to be on Amazon. Amazon Global uh, Selling Program has helped us right from the beginning. They tell you how to uh, click your photographs, how to present your product, how to price your product, compliances of the various countries that you want to sell in, even the label design, then how the taxation structures in the various countries work, how the shipments should be done, what is the kind of marketing strategy you should have to sell your product. In Amazon, you get your money automatically in your account Within 15 days, whether you're selling in the US or you're selling in any part of the world or India. In the smallest village in India, if you're making a product and you want your product to reach the whole world, the best partner you can have is Amazon. Digital empowerment of Indian MSMEs is key to realizing the government's aim of making India make for world. With easy access to international markets and customers through helpful online ecosystems, this local to global concept can be fast tracked. To talk to us about this, we have a special guest on our show today. I have the pleasure of inviting Dr. Badri Narayanan Gopal Krishnan, Head of Trade, Commerce and Strategic Economic Dialogue at Niti Aayog in the Government of India. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you for having me. With the Prime Minister's call of Make in India, Make for World a couple of years ago, what have been some of the steps taken at the policy level, sir, uh, that have geared the system towards helping our MSMEs sell globally and thereby increase our exports? Indeed, the, our Honourable Prime Minister has been uh, focused on uh, boosting our exports uh, for uh, several reasons. The, the main uh, reason is that if we learn to export more to the world, uh, at the same time, we are also able to develop capabilities and capacities in uh, our domestic ecosystem, uh, wherein we become less uh, reliant on the imports as well. So in this context, uh, MSMEs play an important role. For MSMEs to uh, compete in the global markets, uh, first they have to increase their scale. In order for that to happen, uh, uh, there has to be uh, some kind of uh, facility or uh, way in which the smaller uh, micro and smaller firms can get access to finance. So government has significantly increased the, uh, the availability of uh, credit and finance by various uh, measures. So that is one aspect. And, and second is also the, the Startup India, the whole Startup India uh, initiative, which boosts the uh, proliferation of startups which then gradually emerge into unicorns. There are so many unicorns that are coming up. So that is also another, another aspect. And another very important uh, thing in exports is the quality certification. 
so uh, and, and standards, development of standards. So there are also a lot of programs developed to um, improve the, the capacity of the domestic firms, particularly the MSMEs, to meet with the global standards and also develop our own standards. The zero defect is one example. So various uh, initiatives are there in order to um, improve the quality standards. The success of local to global can be gauged by the fact that exports have touched $400 billion in the last fiscal. So how historic is this achievement and what does the road ahead really look like? Absolutely, uh, this is a great observation. Um, this has been the uh, highest ever uh, level of exports we have achieved. And more importantly, more, uh, more than the macro level uh, performance, the, the total that you just mentioned, we should also look at the quality of the exports, the quality, the, the, the components, the, the basket. There are several categories which were um, close to zero before and now they are in billions. Um, you know, things like uh, smartphones, um, some of the electronic components and devices. For, th these were uh, hardly uh, exported before. Uh, forget about exporting, they were hardly produced also earlier. So this, this export increase, First, it is an all-time uh, high growth. It's a record high growth. And uh, this is also, in my opinion, not a, not a one-off situation. It is, it is an indication of a trend towards greater and greater growth. And there are many reasons for this. The first is that uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the infrastructure that has been developed over time, including some of the things I mentioned previously, uh, they are now showing results. So, so this is an indication that all the efforts for export promotion are now beginning to work. That is the first thing. So this is more like push from the domestic side. Second is uh, we are engaging with many countries in terms of free trade agreements. We have signed a couple of free trade agreements with the UAE, with Australia. Many more are coming up with the UK, with the EU, uh, Israel, GCC and so on. That is going to uh, ensure that we are, our, our market access in many of these countries is going to uh, increase a lot which means that our exporters have more uh, markets to export to. The share of MSME exports as part of the country's annual merchandise exports has dipped though from 49.35% uh, in the financial year 2021 to 45.04% in the financial year of 2022. So what are the reasons uh, for this trend and how can it actually be reversed? So uh, the share of MSMEs in exports uh, can uh, keep uh, changing over time. There could be many reasons for that. Uh, and I also would think that this is not necessarily something to uh, worry about. Uh, what is more important is the absolute performance of MSME's uh, exports. So if that is sustained and uh, keeps growing, uh, that would be good enough. Uh, uh, it could be, one of the reasons could be that the, uh, I just mentioned previously about increase in uh, some of the you know, tech exports, uh, electronic components, smartphones and so on. So that is, uh, many of these products are uh, essentially uh, um, you know, uh, manufacturable in large scale. So uh, there could be a structural shift in the, in the export basket where uh, uh, several uh, uh, you know, commodities uh, which, are, uh, which are predominantly manufactured by large scale uh, m manufacturers uh, could show up more in exports. So that is that could be one reason, but that should not be a reason to worry about uh, because um, uh, whenever, whenever you start manufacturing these uh, high-tech uh, commodities, gradually an ecosystem gets built within India. So many of the larger scale manufacturers, they're also setting up a lot of uh, you know, smaller uh, factories and they are creating demand for a lot of smaller factories, developing capabilities. I think this will keep happening over time. This cannot happen overnight. This will happen over time. So probably in the next few years, we will see an increase in the participation of MSMEs in these uh, high-tech exports also. Thank you for those uh, wonderful insights, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Now, with the country's exports touching new heights every day, the role of our MSMEs in this growth will continue to define our success globally and assist us in keeping India first. It's time for another inspiring story of a successful global seller who went digital first. Aromatana is a fragrance company that takes inspiration from India's history and culture to deliver unique 
Aromatic experiences to international customers. Launched in 2018, Aromatan aims to build new aroma brands for a global customer base. I'm Taha, I'm the CEO of Aromatan. We are a young, global, digital first aromatics business. We build fragrance centric brands for consumers across the world. We are a family of perfumers. I'm a fifth generation perfumer in this family. We've always imagined a life in which we would be running a perfumery business of some kind. In 2015, when we launched Aromatan, we had the idea to bring traditional perfumery in a modern avatar to consumers across the world. So what do we do? We go back to our roots. Our roots are in Arabic perfumery and we recreate Arabic perfumery for the modern consumer, this is where our first brand, Dukhni, was born. Our second brand, Aroma Fume, seeks to use natural materials, fine fragrance recipes, and really amalgamate the two and infuse them into alternate therapy. We create an aromatic experience to help align the seven chakras to improve well being. When we started thinking about digital in 2017, we were completely clueless. We had no idea what an ad was or how to run it or how to talk to consumers online. Amazon has really held our hand the entire way. Amazon helped us with vendor selection, processes, staying at the right side of the law, and really facilitated and eased several pain points by curating a fabulous program, which they now call Global Selling. Digitization accelerated our growth, enabled us to do in three to four years what we would have otherwise taken 10 to 12 years to achieve, shortened the feedback loop, and enabled us to interact closer with consumers, speak to consumers in real time, and really position our brands and our products with more real time actionable data. Amazon, it's not only global, but it's also working 24 hours a day. So you're really creating that ease for the consumer to shop when they want to shop, as opposed to the timings that you set for your business otherwise. Big part of us and our success on Amazon, on the marketplace, as a digital business, is taking India to the world. We really want to put India in an enviable position in the world of perfumery, which is very large. With that unique story of a typically traditional industry disrupted through digital technology, it's time for a short break. See you on the other side. Welcome back to Amazon Sambhav in association with India Today Television. The launch of Amazon's global selling program in India a few years back was a shot in the arm for Indian sellers who wanted to sell internationally but struggled with regulations, with customs, currency conversions and several other issues. The global selling program brought them ease of exporting that took care of all of their needs in a simple all in one package. To talk about this and more, I now have the pleasure of welcoming Bhupen Vakankar, Director of Global Trade Amazon India on the show today. Thank you for having me here. Bhupen, to start off, we'd like to understand your views on how e-commerce really helps expand the exports opportunity for lakhs of entrepreneurs in India. Traditionally, uh, exports in India have been run as B2B operations where businesses worked as contract manufacturers for other brands. The scale of operations associated with B2B exports have prevented small and medium businesses from participating in this phenomenon. However, with the digitization and growing internet access, today the opportunity has expanded to businesses of all sizes irrespective of where they are. There are a few friction points where e-commerce really has made an impact and has lowered the entry barrier for entrepreneurs to start and expand their exports business. First is market access. Today, Indian entrepreneurs can sell directly to customers across the world through e-commerce with Amazon Global Selling. They don't need to have any local footprint in any international market and don't have to depend on intermediaries. 
in a way this brings them brings the seller closer to the customer second is market intelligence and consumer insights selling online provides businesses with rich data that they can use to stay abreast with latest consumption patterns trends on styles and pricing using this data allows businesses to build products that are that best cater to the evolving needs of the global customer. Then you have cross-border logistics and payments. Earlier, businesses needed to book warehouse spaces in various countries, procure shipping containers to export, and so on. They would often have to wait 90 to 120 days for payments to come through. With Amazon Global Selling, we have variabilized this aspect completely. This gives the seller the option to store as little as one product for one day in our warehouse or thousands of products for months together. We have also worked hard to reduce the time and complexities associated with cross-border payments, enabling sellers to get paid in as little as 7 to 14 days. This provides businesses with the working capital that they can use for further growth. So with all this heavy lifting being taken care of, entrepreneurs can today just focus their energies on their products and knowing their customers better. They can build a business in their own name, create a global brand uh, for themselves. And we have seen thousands of such examples on Amazon Global Selling today. Is this opportunity to create global businesses limited to entrepreneurs and startups in big cities only? You know, today there are over 75,000 startups in India uh, and nearly half of them come from tier two and tier three cities. Lacks of small businesses, manufacturers and traders are spread all across India. Incidentally, we just concluded our second season of Propel Startup Accelerator a few days ago. And this initiative is designed to help Indian startups in the consumer product space launch globally. For this accelerator, we received over 1,000 applications from startups in 150 plus cities across the country. So that gives you an idea that the innovation and opportunity isn't limited to just the metros or big cities today. Let me give you a very interesting story. Abhishek Midda from Jaipur started a tapestry business in 2012 from the basement of his home while he was still in college. Today, he runs a successful exports business of home decor and leather products with customers across North America and Europe. Despite the challenges over the last couple of years, his business on Amazon Global Selling has grown over 3x year on year. What strikes me the most about Abhishek's story is that his optimism to grow even more. He plans to expand operations to more global markets and double the size of his 40-member team by the end of 2022. Abhishek's story resonates in a majority of over 1 lakh exporters that are on our global selling program today. Many of these sellers are first-generation entrepreneurs who come not just from metros, but from towns like Rurki, Faridabad, Siliguri, Katak, Dharmshala, Karur, Madurai, amongst others. Our Honorable Prime Minister Bhupen has spoken about the importance of boosting exports from India and empowering our startups and MSMEs. So how can e-commerce really help? E-commerce has emerged as a very strong channel for exports in the last four or five years. Wider availability of internet and the evolution of technology has blurred the lines between local and global. And this is ultimately helping entrepreneurs dream bigger. Through e-commerce exports, an Ayurvedic supplement manufacturer can sell products directly to customers in the UK, or schools in the US can purchase made in India STEM toys and use them as part of their curriculum. Exporters on Amazon Global Selling have already crossed $5 billion in cumulative exports so far, and we are super excited by the momentum we are seeing. This just shows the role of e-commerce and Amazon can play in boosting exports from India and contribute to the Honorable Prime Minister's vision. That said, we need to focus more on providing a conducive ecosystem to enable more and more businesses and startups to create exports-oriented businesses. We need to create more awareness about e-commerce exports on the ground. We need to leverage technology at every step of the value chain to simplify processes associated with e-commerce exports. What are the top three things, Bhupen, that you'd want to tell entrepreneurs and business owners who aspire to build big global brands and contribute to increasing exports from India? This is where I see the upcoming foreign trade policy being an instrument of transformation. At our end, we remain focused on using Amazon's global presence and investments in technology, logistics, and infrastructure to work with businesses of all sizes, helping take their local innovation and expertise global. All of this is in pursuit of our goal to enable $20 billion in cumulative exports from India by 2025. I think the ecosystem is coming together nicely to help Indian entrepreneurs and small businesses create robust global businesses and build strong brands from India. 
Today, they have access to the internet, to market insights, to capital, to global supply chains and infrastructure. The government has also taken a number of steps to make exports easier. So it's a great time to build a global brand if you're an entrepreneur. My advice to businesses is to not be afraid to experiment and fail. Failure can be useful as long as we learn from our mistakes. Apart from this, I believe there are three things that entrepreneurs need to focus to thrive in this fast-paced digital world. First, they need to put customers at the center of their business strategy. They need to stay sharply focused on the evolving needs of their customers, no matter where they are. Second, it is important for entrepreneurs to understand that product quality ultimately drives customer loyalty. Being focused on product quality and innovation will help businesses resonate with customers across the world. And this is key to long-term success anywhere. Finally, entrepreneurs need to think global from day one. Digitization and e-commerce represent a great opportunity which requires businesses to explore prospects globally, ultimately helping power India's economic growth. Thank you, Bhupen, for those wonderful insights. We wish continued success to this program that's definitely enabling Indian sellers and leaving a mark on the global stage. For decades, exports have been limited to large enterprises and business houses. But the advancement in digital technologies and growing internet penetration this opportunity has today expanded to businesses of all sizes and there are thousands of shining examples of success already. The Make in India, Make for World train has well and truly picked up speed today, bolstering the Indian economy and keeping India first. With that, it's a wrap on this episode of Amazon Sambhav. Stay tuned for many more stories of digital growth and transformation that are keeping India first. Bye for now.